Luxottica, which is a company based in Milan, is the world's biggest maker of glasses, or eyewear as they like to call it. They make anything really from fairly cheap spectacles that almost anyone would buy to really high-end luxury items. Of course, just like anybody selling to the consumer goods sector, they're under a certain amount of pressure. Consumers around the world aren't buying in the quantities they used to because of the renewed economic downturn. But they've just announced a pretty good set of first quarter results. For this week's View from the Top, I talked to Andrea Guerra, their chief executive. I started off by asking him just how the economic weakness is affecting the company. Our uh, generation of management entrepreneurs is very lucky. We are in a world where finally we can say we can serve another two billion consumers in the world. There are no other generations before us that can say such a thing. The market is such wider, so wider today. On the other side, uh, everything is much more uncertain. Everything is much more unstable. Uh, business cycles are much shorter. We cannot predict. So I think you need to be more agile, more adaptive, quicker. But I mean, having said all that, um, we're in the middle of this crisis in the Eurozone. Um, you know, there's one country who might be kicked out of it any moment. How does that um, impact you? You know, we are well exposed to the world. The world is going very fast today. Uh, Italy and Spain today are tough, tough markets. We have grown in the last 24 months in both of them, but they're tough. Uh, they represent total, the sum of the two, four or five percent of our business. Italy is the place where we come from, where our heart is. And the real answer to this is let's give more. So we're giving more ideas. We're sitting next to our customers to satisfy their consumers. Our service, we're trying to do the best of the best. We're inventing capsule collections, uh, special events, special ideas. This is what we're trying to do. But it's tough. So but you immediately you, you move away and Germany is not as tough. France is not as tough. I mean, what I was interested in, those, in a time of economic austerity, do people still go and buy glasses, eyewear? Maybe they buy things a bit cheaper. I mean, what's your feeling so, about that? Uh, obviously, you're talking about, again, Mediterranean Europe. So if you're talking about the world, I think that the world has never been so healthy. Okay, so people are happy to spend some money on uh, new pairs of sunglasses. And our business, to, to really answer your question, is made of two parts. One part is more driven by the economic cycle, which is the sunglasses. One part which is more needed, which is prescription glasses. If you need them, you need them. So one party maybe is more sexy, but more up and down. The other part maybe is less sexy, but very resilient. On this point about uh, the political environment, the econo economic environment, how worried are you that the Eurozone might break up? You know, uh, we could, we could uh, endorse what you're saying two ways. Having uh, 20 meetings a, w a day and understanding what will happen, and for sure we will get the wrong answer or continue to do what we know what to do, the best sunglasses and the best precision frames we can do. Mm -hmm. And we chose the second. Mm. Well, that's probably sensible. <laughs> but um, what about those people, like you've now seen Mr. Holland in France and Mr. Draghi even saying, well, they ought to be a bit more of a growth program in the, in the European government. So, I mean, again, do you, what do you think of that? Or do you just I mean, get, observe get on with things? what the pragmatic Americans have done. They have devaluated the dollar and spend some money. We're not doing both of them. I mean, uh, the euro being at 130, I think it's a little bit overvalued today. So there's maybe a few more things that some governments could be doing, perhaps should be doing. I've got no doubts. Mm. When I first met you, you were running the Meloni domestic appliance business, again owned by um, one man, um, a family company with a public shareholder, you're doing the same thing now. Yeah. Is, is there a kind of secret to running these kind of companies where you've got a dominant shareholder, but there's a public shareholding as well? You know, I think that 
uh, in, in many different ways. There are some European countries where family entrepreneurship has been always very critical and very important. And uh, the families work, work with has always been very intellectually honest on one side and uh, long-sighted. So, you know, there is the story about Italian companies, Italian brands that have been created by very intelligent Italian entrepreneurs, but they're not able to understand that those companies are more important than themselves. And so they created them and at the end they killed them. I think there are uh, the Merloni family, the Mr. De Vecchio family, I think they have been quite long-sighted and uh, this company has been listed for 20 years, 25 years. Always very open, always very transparent, always looking to the world as their uh, playing field. So uh, has been a secret for them. For myself, you know, every company has their own obligation, either it's uh, executive committees or it's your chairman or it's, it's our life.